Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson we would do something a little bit different, but we're going to stick along the lines of saving you time inside of your non linear editing application. You know, as much as we want to stay inside of the application as much as we can, there are times where we do need to leave to go to a program like Adobe's After Effects to do a little bit of work. And what I want to do in this lesson is I want to show you how you're going to use After Effects in conjunction with Media Composer, and you're actually going to use a little technique that I use all the time that's going to save you time in your compositing to get back into Media Composer Symphony and do your editing. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And as you can see, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch over to my format for a second. As you can see right up here by my project type, I am in a 1080i project. In many cases, this is the type of project you're going to be working in if you're doing something that's going to be broadcast on television. Now, what we want to do is, we, you know, we have this sequence here. There's only five clips in there, and actually four clips. And what we want to do is we want to take this sequence and export it to work with inside of Adobe's After Effects. Now, this footage was originally 2398. Now, the problem is, you know, for the purposes of what we're doing, I've just taken it and stuck it into a 1080i timeline. And what we want to do is we want to assume that this footage was originally 2398. It was converted to 1080i and then it was imported into our system or captured into our system to work with. So we know that at some point originally this footage was 2398. Now once, I'm, once I have it inside of my nonlinear editing application, there's not much I can do with it. It's 1080i and that's pretty much the way it's going to stay. But that doesn't mean that that's the way it has to be inside of After Effects. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to make sure that the entire timeline is selected here. Now I don't need audio, so let's just delete audio. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to export this footage here. I'm just going to stick it on the desktop. I'll just call it, uh, let's just call it Moto Cross 1080i. I'm going to say save here. This timeline is uh, just short of 21 seconds long. And you'll see it's pretty much, you know, sort of a, a real time export. It's going to take us just a little bit over 21 seconds to export this. And I also want to show you another great free tool that I use, you know, pretty much, I was going to say on a daily basis. It's way more than on a daily basis because I use it on any type of clip that I get that I don't know what it is, where it came from, or anything like that. And what I'm talking about here is Media Info. Now, what I want to do here just for a second is I'm going to Alt Tab into Firefox. What I encourage you to do is I encourage you to head on over to the Media Info website, which is mediainfo.sourceforge.net slash en, obviously if you want it in English. And what you're going to do is navigate over to the download section, and you're going to see that we have all kinds of different versions here. But of course, because I'm working on Windows, Windows or Mac, if you happen to be working on Mac, are really the two primary downloads that you're going to be using. What I did was I downloaded Media Info. And now I have the ability to simply navigate over to a clip, any clip that I need to figure out what exactly is going on with it. Now, I've, of course, I'm, you know, I've labeled it 1080i, but let's just say hypothetically I didn't know what this was, and I need to find out whether it's interlaced or whether it's progressive and what the frame rate is. What I can do is simply right-click and say Media Info. What's going to happen is Media Info is going to open up, and what I want to do is say Show Me HTML View right here. And you'll see that now I'm given a real in-depth look at exactly what is going on with this clip. Everything from the overall bitrate, which in this case I exported it as DNX HD 145. But more importantly, you'll see that if I come down, it tells me what the actual codec is right there. It tells me the duration. It tells me the bitrate, whether it's you know constant or variable. You'll see I know that it's now 1920 by 1080. I didn't even need to go into QuickTime or anything like that. But most importantly now, I know that it's 29.97 frames per second and it's interlaced. So this pretty much tells me that this clip is 1080i. You know, I really encourage you to download Media Info. It is such a handy free tool that I guarantee, especially if you're working on shows or projects where you're getting media from all over the place and you're not really sure how you're going to import it, a fantastic free utility for you to use to get all the information that you need. 
Okay, so we know that this clip is 1080i, so what we're going to do is we're going to Alt-Tab into Adobe's After Effects, obviously Command-Tab for all my Mac friends out there, and most people's, you know, sort of common workflows, they're going to right-click, they're going to say Import, they're going to say File, they're going to select the file from the desktop like such, and many people start working right now. Now, if you're going to start doing that, you're going to run into problems with fielding issues right away, because right now you'll see that based on what After Effects sees of the clip, it really doesn't know what the field dominance of the clip is, and because we're working in 1080i, we know that the field dominance is, of course, upper. So what I'm going to do is simply right-click, I'm going to come down to Interpret Footage, I'm going to say Main. Now, most people take it to this step. They're going to come down to Separate Fields, and they're simply going to say Upper, and they're going to say OK. Now, you'll see that the clip has now been updated, and it's been tagged as being Upper Field Dominant. So most people start working. Now, you know, in most cases, like I said, you can start working, do what you have to do, render it out, get back into Media Composer, and simply need to keep editing. But here's the situation where this technique that I'm going to show you is really going to come in handy. Two things that drive me absolutely crazy. Rotoscoping, chroma keying. Why? Because they're never done properly. And when I say they're not done properly, normally with rotoscoping, it's, you know, there could be all kinds of motion blur and stuff like that going on. Chroma key, in most cases, I get horrible keys sent back to me. And to be perfectly honest, I want to spend a little time working on them as necessary, you know, and really, I want to actually be getting in and rotoscoping and keying as few frames as I have to do. Now, obviously, the difference between 1080i, 30 frames per second, and 2398 is six frames. And now you're thinking, well, six frames, really, what's that? Well, think of all the rotoscoping that's involved, you know, let's say in a 30 second clip. You know, basically, you're by working in 2398, you're actually saving yourself six frames per second. That's a lot of frames when you think about it over 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, etc. So, how do we tell After Effects that this clip originally came? from 2398 material. Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is right click and say interpret footage. I'm going to come to main. You'll see that we already set uh, the After Effects fields to be upper field. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell After Effects to guess the 3 2 pull down of this clip. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that if you're going to do what I'm going to show you, you need to make sure that the very first frame of the clip that you have inside of After Effects has actual video on it and is not black. After Effects needs to take a look at the first few frames, and if they're black, it's not going to know what to set the 3 2 pull down to be. So, what I'm going to do is simply say guess 3 2 pull down. You'll see as soon as I click on that, it's basically telling me now, okay, so here's the pull down right here that's being removed, and right now what we basically have is an effective frame rate of 23,976. You'll see as soon as I say OK, this clip is now 23,976 frames per second, and it's 21 seconds long. You'll remember it was 20 seconds and 29 frames, which was essentially uh, 21 seconds. So now we're basically working in 2398. So I can drag down here now, and you'll see that if I drag and drop onto the Create New Composition button, what I'm going to do is just come down to the second mark here. There we go. Now you'll see if I click through right over here, we're at 22 frames. We're going to go to 23 frames, and we're going to go to the next second. So what I've basically done is just removed those extra six frames. Now you'll see if I come down here, I'm just going to get to where this shot changes. Right now, this shot changes at three seconds and 10 frames. What I'm going to do is just Alt Tab back in a symphony here. I'm just going to select this first clip, and you'll see three seconds and 12 frames. Remember, that's the difference when working with 2398 versus 1080i. You're always going to get the extra few frames in 1080i. So now, now that we've done this, we've gone through, we've rotoed everything, we've chroma keyed everything. Now, how do we render this out back to 1080i so that we can get back into Media Composer and Symphony and import this correctly? Well, it's actually very easy. What we're going to do is come to the render queue. We're simply going to take our finished composition. We're going to drag it right down here, drop it into our timeline. What we do first is we'll set our output module to obviously be DNX HD 145. I've already gone in and set this up. If you need to know more about this, you can actually check out a previous lesson that I did about round tripping inside of Media Composer with After Effects to get all these render settings exactly the way that you need them. But the most important thing in this case is inside of the render settings. What I'm going to do is click on Best Settings. I'm going to navigate down to the field render. I'm going to set it to upper. And as far as the 3 2 pull down goes, you can choose any one of these you want. You're going to get the same end result. So you'll see now upper field. What we're going to do is this 3 is going to have 3 2 pull down. I'm simply going to say OK. Let's just render this out to the desktop here for a second here. I'll just come back up here. I'll send it to the desktop. I'll just call this we'll just call this junk for right now. 
I'm going to say save, and I'm going to say render. You're going to see After Effects is going to zing through this here. You'll have to imagine all my fantastic graphics that I did there. It's going to take a second here. The reason it raced through that first shot was because I already had it all previewed. So now basically After Effects is taking a look at each one of these clips here for the first time. Not too shabby. It says it's going to be done in one minute. I think it's going to be done in a lot less time than that. And what we're going to do when we're done is we're going to take a look at this inside of Media Info again. And basically what we're going to have is we started with 1080i, we ended with 1080i, but we got all the fringe benefits of 23976 for our rotoscoping and our chroma key. And what I'm going to do is simply right click on Junk. I'm going to say Media Info. Now, of course, I want to make sure that I'm looking at HTML view and take a look at this right down here, 1920 by 1080. 29.9 frames per second interlaced. This clip is exactly the way I had it before. And of course, if I come back into Media Composer here, I'm just going to import junk from the desktop here. Well, let's just make sure that I'm RGB. We're, of course, for the, we are image size for the current format. I'm just simply going to say ignore here. Now, the reason that this clip is RGB is because that's how all the clips were imported when I originally imported them. I'm just going to say go. You'll see Symphony here is going to import this clip. Again, you know, we're pretty much looking at, you know, just a little bit longer than real time. This clip, again, was 21 seconds long. It's just importing right now. Take a little bit longer than real time, but that's okay. And what we're going to have when we're done is one clip that ideally would have all of our green screening or chroma keying done to it. And basically, you're ready to take it, drop it into your timeline, and play it back with a lot less work done than what most people would do. I'm just going to hit play here. And of course, what's important to keep in mind is that if I hit T here to select the entire length of the clip, take a look at that, 20 seconds, 29 frames. And you'll remember with our original sequence, 20 seconds and 29 frames. So I hope this technique has shown you that, you know, really, we talk about getting in and saving time inside of your nonlinear editing application. But guess what? Saving time inside of Adobe's After Effects is actually going to help you speed up your overall editing workflow because you're going to get out of that compositing application quick and get back to doing what you really need to do, which is editing. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.